Let's try it again. No. Okay. okay. I'm just gonna lean against the wall like this because my back is killing me. Let's talk about my not so impressive titles of 2021. That's what I have the title as. I only wrote down a few in general because I didn't even want to think about some of these titles. I'm gonna go through these quick, much quicker than my life titles, which was like a 40 minute filming process. Hopefully it's a shorter video to watch. I'm embarrassed by how long that video is, to be honest, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, Luna always has to make an appearance. She's everywhere. She's just everywhere. First, Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Obviously, it's a book of the month. Really dislike this. Riley, what were you thinking? It's about a girl who literally can't trust anything she thinks, sees, does because she doubts herself so much. She thinks she's hallucinating entire conversations, and I felt like this could have been fun, but it wasn't. This is weird. The twist felt really lazy and awkward, and I don't want to talk about it. And I don't want to talk about it because there are like a million reviews on this book on why people didn't like it some people liked it i didn't i don't want to talk about it it annoys me it pisses me off i feel like all of these are going to be like that i don't want to talk about them i don't have constructive criticism for you because i don't want to talk about you this close to okay by lisa cross smith this is about a woman who saves a man from jumping off a bridge she's a psychologist and she sort of takes care of him for a weekend and they develop this relationship and eventually it turns sexual and it's really weird it feels so unprofessional on her part it feels very awkward and uncomfortable and i don't really understand what was the purpose of it okay they're supposed to heal each other and go their separate ways or, or grow from this moment but it didn't feel like that it just felt like a really awkward moment between two strangers talking to each other um, and that is all the criticism I have to offer. Next, Yoko Agawa's books. Gosh, gracious goodness, silly golly. Boy, do I dislike this author so much. I've read all of their translated works except for their three novellas that are in one book. So I've read Memory Police. The ending, can I say that the ending? I read Memory Police when it came out. So that was what, like two years ago at this point? I read Memory Police Luna, always, with the same noises, every time, please. I read Memory Police when it came out, and the ending is so funny. Like, think of Veggie Tales. Think of, think of Veggie Tales when I say that the ending is funny. Oh my gosh, you scared me. You scared me, Lulu. <laughs> um... Do you want to make an appearance? Okay. Yeah, Yoko Agawa's books just... I just don't know what purpose they serve in a literary sense, I guess. Oh, Hotel Iris is about a young woman, maybe 17, 16 years old, and she works at the hotel that her, runs through her family, and she develops this relationship with an older man who lives by himself on an island and he's into bdsm and it just paints it's like 50 shades of gray all over again it just paints this really gross uh image of what bdsm is and you know this man he's a pedophile you know and he's taking advantage of this emotionally vulnerable girl um and it's just like ugh, yuck yes why are you pushing me out of the way think i even understood the short story collection at all in general yoko agawa is just like stories about i'm trying i'm making sure she's not biting any books um stories about nothing i have little fires everywhere by celeste ng oh my goodness gracious did i despise this i despise this it reeks of privilege and in my opinion it does not have the conversations that are necessary to divest in what that privilege means um it just feels like a half written story it felt so cheap to me luna police i just don't know why you have to do that every time i do this this artist that travels with her daughter they're black they move to this very white town um and they rent this house from a white middle class perfect woman 
named Elena. That's my name. I'm devastated, let me tell you. Most people absolutely adore this book, and I just don't get it. I have the Isle of Dogs. I won't talk about it for long, but basically this tells maybe like two minutes worth of the Isle of the Dog storyline. And I think some of the illustrations are so pretty. But if you had never seen the movie, then you wouldn't have any clue as to like what this is actually about. Because it tells maybe 2% of the actual story. It just skips so many points. So many key points within the storyline. And I'm like, okay, but what for? I paid $20. I paid $20. You're going to see this in my wrap-up for December. But I have Good Talk by Mara Jacob. I think I'm going to stop reading the New York Times nonfiction anti-racist bestsellers because whenever I pick them up, they are incredibly disappointing and they don't offer anything to the conversation, which is really concerning because I feel like a lot of white audiences read those books and think, oh, I'm an anti-racist now, and that's just not how that works because anti-racist doesn't stop at reading books. It's the activism, it's a lifestyle change. So like, also, just because you read a book doesn't mean you're smarter. Like there's that whole conversation of how books won't save us. You should watch those videos because they're really incredible. And to an extent, I do agree with them. I, books are just a stepping stone, right? Like they offer conversations. So that being said, this offered nothing to the conversation. I don't think this was necessarily bad. I don't think this was necessarily good. It's like a graphic, a graphic memoir, that's what it is. And it's told with like these pictures and conversations. Um, but again, it doesn't offer anything new. It felt really tedious to go through, to get through, excuse me. You know, she's married to a white man. And so sometimes she has these like difficult conversations with him. Um, and it's just like, okay, like there, there's a lot of texts that are like this. And I'd say the only thing that makes this unique from those other texts is maybe the format. And I wasn't even too gaga about the format, to be honest. So, yeah, not particularly brilliant. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even recommend this to anyone. I wouldn't. Don't do it. Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. This is a translated text. I hated this. Uh, this author can write like let's just get that point out yeah of course the author can write this is great i'm sure some of their other novels might be really wonderful um but this was not <laughs> um this is about a world where animals have caught this infectious disease and they're dying from it and it even gets to a point where which is our domestic animals and that if we don't kill them if we don't put them down then us humans will catch the disease and so now we're living where the meat industry is on humans and so we've been cannibalized across the globe so our protagonist has been separated from his wife because it looks like they've lost their child and so this gives you insights on the process of how human bodies are broken down for meat this shit is crazy <laughs> nothing happens in here really nothing happens in here i think there's two major moments that really push this book and it's the two moments where we show how inhumane we've really become like we're so detached from the reality we once knew yeah like there's this part where they talk about um like the cattle being used as sex workers and it was just disgusting fuck that book read it hate it love it fuck that book i'm gonna say my most disappointing read not that i hated it i think it was just the most disappointing of all my reads was um the house in the cerulean sea by tk klum i thought this was kind of garbage i absolutely adore adored the children in this i fucking adored them i thought they were phenomenal the the one or two lines that a kid would have in like every chapter i lived for it uh this is about a man and he's like a social worker he's a caseworker excuse me and we live in this world where we have mythical creatures now and this is a special house with kids that are particularly seen as dangerous the extent of their capabilities is unknown and that scares the government or whatever so they sent to this little house on an island caseworker goes to decide if it should be closed down if those kids should be separated whatever 
Um, and he ends up falling in love with the children and the caretakers. And I just felt like there wasn't enough chemistry between him and the house manager. It, it just wasn't enough. The adults in this book did not hit. Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki uh, Tsuchimura. I'm sorry. I'm going to learn how to pronounce it. Um, this was really disappointing for so many reasons. I thought it was so boring. It was so long. The cover is really pretty, but I really don't understand the hype behind this. Not Gaga about the kids. It was literally like... 200 pages of nothing happening you know this is about these kids who get the opportunity to walk through their bedroom mirror and hang out in this castle in another world and the goal is to find a key that unlocks a door um and you can get a wish any wish you want um so they're given a year to look for that key but what they spend most of the time is just hanging out playing video games at the castle i don't care about a lot of these kids the ending was brilliant, don't get me wrong, the ending I fucking loved, but otherwise that book in my opinion is not worth it. <laughs> the Midnight Library. This felt like a self-help book and I gave it three stars on Goodreads and I I literally started my review being like, okay, I get the hype and I do, I still get the hype, uh, but like I said, it felt like a self-help book um there's this woman and she's given this opportunity at the midnight library to see if there is a different life a different version of her life but there are these moments like she has to give a speech or something like that i think and it just felt so self-help bookish like okay that's not the way you you serve a lesson that's not how it goes like you can't do that that's that's not how you're supposed to teach me a lesson. I'm sorry, girlies. That's not how it's done. Let's go on to the ones I don't have. Oh, Less by Andrew, is it Sean Greer? I despised that book. I absolutely hated it. It's about a man, he's gay, he's going to this wedding of like an ex-boyfriend of theirs. And it's just him being a whiny bitch, in my opinion. Like, I'm just gonna go off and I'm gonna say, He's a whiny bitch the whole time. Like, he has a career. People look for him. I just, I had to listen to it on audiobook. And I just kept on looking down. And I'm like, damn, 25%? 27%? 29%? Damn. Oh, Shadow and Bone. I have Shadow and Bone, too. Okay, so, I love the Grishaverse. Don't get me wrong. That being said... Shadow and Bone trilogy, garbage. So much potential down the drain. Let's get this straight. The show is actually perfect. I love it. The casting, brilliant. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. Brilliant. I can see why people liked it, but it was like half of a story. If you know what I mean? It just... And I read those three books in one sitting. I banged them out, dude. Oh, Mexican Gothic. I didn't like that. I don't see why people liked it. It reminded me a little bit of Haunting of Hill House. Um, but it just didn't seem realistic to me in any aspect. Like, the horror elements were not there for me. It's about a woman who goes to, um, her cousin's house in Mexico, uh, because she hasn't heard from her in a while, and it turns out that she's sort of, like, bedridden. Um, but she stays with her cousin for a little bit just to keep an eye on her. And there's weird stuff that, like, happens in the house. I didn't like the what's wrong with the house like after we find out what what's with the house i didn't like that at all what's her name sylvia moreno garcia was like oh um the yellow wallpaper what a great short story let me do something sort of like that and then she gave us that and it didn't even serve oh and the worst book i read this year is by andre ackerman call me by your name what a terrible novel i I just don't think it's pretty. You know, a lot of people... I feel like I've been so grumpy this whole video. I can't help it. I didn't like these books. Um, I feel like Call Me By Your Name just read so pretentious. There was nothing, in my opinion, very lyrical. I found it difficult to understand. I didn't enjoy the characters. No. It just was a no for me. But yeah, that's it. Did I say my name? My name's Elena. Nice to see you again. Or if I haven't seen you before, hi. My back's killing me. I got scoliosis. It hurts, you know? I need someone to just, like, drop kick me in the back. Or between the shoulder blades. Ugh.
that would that would straighten my back. That would straighten my back. And my ribs. My ribs twist from my scoliosis. Ugh. Next video you're gonna see from me is either a haul or a December wrap up. Yeah, that's it, my loves. I love you, honey bunny. I'll see you later.